What's up guys, hope you're all doing great. Welcome to the first tutorial in this color correction and color grading section. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at the different Lumetri scopes we have available in Premiere. But before jumping into that, let's first briefly talk about what the terms color correction and color grading actually means. So, color correction is basically the process of adjusting light and intensity to achieve the right white balance and even out light exposure. And then color grading is basically enhancing the existing colors to give a certain emotion to the clip like a wintry look or an orange and tea look, you know, something like that. So guys, once again, color correction is correcting the exposure and white balance and color grading is manipulating colors to achieve a certain look. Now, if you're still feeling a bit confused about these, then don't worry because in this section, we will be going through a whole color correction and color grading process in so much detail that hopefully, hopefully by the end, you will have a really solid understanding and you will be more confident with these concepts. Now, in order to color correct or color grade a footage, we need to work in the Lumetri panel. The Lumetri panel can be accessed by either clicking over here or by going into the Windows menu and then selecting Lumetri panel. Now, under the Lumetri color panel, we have six tabs and we will be going through each of these tabs later in this course. But first of all, for now, let's look at the Lumetri scopes. So if I right click in this space, I can see that there are five different scopes available. And now let me just bring up all of these scopes and then we can go through each of these. So I've got this one now, two, three, okay. And now I've got all of these here. So in this course, guys, we'll be covering the Luma waveform, which basically shows the whites and blacks in your footage. And then the RGB and vector scopes, which shows the saturation and colors in your footage. Now, these two scopes over here, I'll be honest with you, I have really no idea what they do. And I've really, I mean, I haven't really come across many people who use this. And I myself, I, I have never really used this, these scopes when I'm color grading my footage. So in this course, we will be using just three curves, which are the Luma waveform, RGB and vector scopes. So let's first start with the waveform, which is the one over here. So the waveform is mostly used for luminance and by that I mean the brightness levels, the darks, the highlights, midtones, and your blacks. Now this one basically shows the luminance levels in your image from left to right. So you can see the clip in the timeline and you can notice that we have this bright limb on the left hand side, which can be clearly seen in the waveform monitor over here. Now, if I get rid of this limb, you will see that the bright spot in the waveform monitor has disappeared too. And now if I bring the lamp back again, then you can see that the bright spot has appeared again. So as I said that it measures the luminance levels from left to right. Now the measurement is done through the scale as you can see over here on the left. So this is your zero IRE and this is the hundred IRE. Now IRE is basically a broadcasting term and it stands for Institute of Radio Engineers. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but the zero IRE. So anything lower than the zero IRE means that the details of your image will be lost, will be completely disappeared in the dark. Similarly, the hundred IRE is where the details of your image will be lost in the whites. So waveform kind of tells you the exposure levels in your image, as I said earlier. Now, the other thing that this waveform is going to tell you is the contrast. So Let's go and play around with these controls over here and see what happens to the waveform. Now, don't worry too much about these controls because we are going to go through each of these later in this section. But right now, if you can see that when I'm increasing the exposure here, the image is getting brighter and you can, I mean, you can see that in the waveform. But the more exposure I'm increasing, the poorer the image is getting. So the image is kind of getting a bit blown out now. Now, let's see what happens when I increase the contrast. So in the waveform, what's happening now is that when I'm increasing the contrast, it is basically pushing the darks down while lifting the highlights up and we are getting more contrast in the image. Now, if I decrease the contrast, you see that the image has become completely flat and lost all of its contrast. Let's now go to the curves and I'm sorry, I'll have to repeat myself again that I will be covering this section with you later in the course. But for now, I just want to kind of show you how the waveform actually works. So. If I move this curve into the mid grays and you can see the image has completely disappeared and everything has been squashed in here because we lost our contrast completely. Now, if I start pulling the contrast back up, like getting the highlights up and the darks down like this, we start to get the details back of our image again. 
Now, guys, we will be covering these curves later in the course, how, like how to get the perfect contrast using the S curve and all of that. So for now, I just wanted to kind of show you that how your Luma waveform monitor actually works and how you can read it. So guys, just to recap it, the Luma waveform scope will tell you the darkness levels and the brightness levels and also the contrast in your image. Let's now look at the next one, which is the vector scope YUV. So I'm first going to get rid of my Luma waveform and I need the vector scope over here, which is this one. So now the vector scope gives you the measurement of colors that exist in your footage. Now, this is basically laid in the same way, exactly in the same way as your color wheels, which are over here. So you can see in the vector scope, we have yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and red. And these are exactly in the same locations as we have in the color wheels. So basically the location of these colors is based on the logic that these are complementary colors so they are kind of opposite of each other what i mean by that is that if you look at the color wheels over here these colors are basically placed opposite of each other so if i move this plus sign into magenta and now you can notice that we have too much magenta in our clip which means that there's an absence of green color and if i now move this plus sign into the blue area then you can see that we've got too much blue. That means that there is an absence of yellow and vice versa. So the vector scope is basically a representation of hue and it's often called hue wheel as well as it shows where you have concentration of specific colors. Now, hue is basically the colors in your image. So if you have green leaves, there's a green hue. You have blue sky or blue water, then you have blue hue. And I mean, hue is just colors that exist in your image. The saturation on the other hand is the intensity of the hue. It's not changing the colors of your image, but it is just the intensity of the hue that exists in your image. So if I just move the saturation slider all the way down to zero, you can see that all of the colors in the vector scope have been sucked into this point. And the image is now left with no hue, no color. So we have no colors in the image and it has become a complete black and white or grayscale image. And now if I move the slider all the way up, then you can see how intense the hue has become in the image. The colors are basically still the same, but they are now much more intense than they were before. Now there are some limits when it comes to colors and these rules are basically defined by the broadcasting industry. So here in the vector scope, this inner circle boundary is your legal limit. I mean, I'm saying legal limit, but it's basically, I, I mean, guidance sort of a thing. So that's your limit for your red, blue, cyan, and magenta, and all of the other colors. Outside the inner circle where you see all of these boxes, these are basically the limits for graphics as graphics contain intensified colors, so there's a higher tolerance for those. A general rule of thumb is not to have your color spreading by more than one third, but again, guys, it varies from image to image, from video to video. So the vector scope, guys, is mostly used for two main things the hue of your image and your saturation and it gives you a very good indication of where your colors are now it's also very useful scope when you are trying to fix skin tones and we are going to look at that later in the course so guys that's your vector scope i mean once again it tells you it gives you a very good indication on your hue and on your saturation level okay so now the next one we are going to look at is the RGB parade. So the RGB parade is somewhat similar to the waveform. It measures the image from left to right, but this scope has three colors, which are kind of like the main colors in pretty much all of the cameras that are being used today. So this is basically measuring the luminance of your red channel from your left. And the next one is measuring the luminance of your green channel. And then the last one is measuring the luminance levels of your blue channel or your blue color. When these primary colors are added together, that is when you get a full colored image like this one. So if I now just go into the curves and start pulling down the blue channel or the blue color. Now you can see that my clip is left with only two colors. And if I now pull down the red two, then my clip is left with only green color. So when a clip is balanced, all your channels are somewhat in the similar area so if i now pull down some red you guys can now see that we have started to get some balance but if i drag it right down then i have lost my balance once again so basically the rgb parade is very handy in balancing your color so your footage doesn't look too blue or orange and the colors are always nicely spread out 
So guys, these are the three scopes that you are going to be using mostly when color grading or color correcting your footage. I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, anything you're not sure about, feel free to drop those in the comment section and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. I'm not going to see you in the next video. So till then, you take care of yourself.